here's an idea. Something that, wait, wait a sec, this is an idea channel. Can't get that off, Mike. Hey guys, I'm back. Let's get technical. I'm sorry for the cheesy beginning. So I've been watching a lot of PBS Idea Channel lately, and it's hosted by this guy named Mike Renetta, who has like the funnest name to say ever. Mike Renetta. Mike. Mike. Mike Renetta. Ha, ha, ha. Mike Renetta. God, that was fun. It's his birthday, by the way, too, so shout out to him. He has talked about using Minecraft for education on his channel before, and he's not alone. Many educational YouTubers have talked about using different types of learning instead of just rote learning. For example, CGP Grey, one of the best YouTubers ever, has talked about this before in a video titled Digital Aristotle. In it, he talks about how we can use programming to help us create the best digital tutor ever. Now, even though I greatly agree with his ideas, I'm not really going to be talking about that in this video. I'm here to talk about something else, and this is the part where I actually, you know, get to the point. I pondered on what to say here, but for lack of better words, let's just say this. The current school system has some flaws. Dude, from technicality, you're being really mean. I don't want to watch your videos anymore. It's really disheartening. Okay, so maybe that was a little harsh, but schools do have plenty of flaws. We're not going to go into all of them at this time. Uh, some of them including, like, it seems kind of weird that we classify kids by age. But yeah, there are plenty more that I wish to share with you in the future. Wait, then what are you trying to share here, then? This, this doesn't make much sense. Jeez, I'm gonna get to that. But let, let's get this straight. I'm not here to ramble on about how we're messing up and the changes we need to make and blah, 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 blah. Which, don't get me wrong, we're going to do it another time. But what I am going to talk about is the pros and cons of rote basic school learning and the pros and cons of blended YouTube learning. Before we start, let's just define rote and basic learning, which is a fair place to start. Rote learning is mainly focused on the memorization of facts and then repeating those facts back out on the test to show you know them. Blended learning is mixing the awesomeness of school learning and the awesomeness of online learning to create supposedly like this one awesome curriculum. Hi guys, Future Self here. So I just edited the video and I realized that I haven't really had such a good definition of blended learning. Like it was okay. So, so here's a better definition of what to look out for in later in the video. So uh, yes, it is mixing the awesomeness of both, but what it really is is it incorporates technology more into the curriculum. So the teacher is not the one teaching them, the teacher is the one giving the kids special attention on a subject they really need help with, teachers doing what teachers are supposed to do. And I also realized later in the video when I described the pros and cons of blended learning, I refer to it as YouTube learning because I'm really focusing on the technology aspect of it, not the entire aspect where the teacher actually helps the kid too, but just the videos themselves. So uh, yeah, just something to look out for. Let's get started. Time for pros and cons. Here we go. Thanks, Jimmy. Okay, now let's talk about some pros of rote learning. Pro? One. It's a human-to-human -human interaction, so supposedly you can ask any question you want, and the teacher can reply to you right there that instant. And let's face it, you can't really do that online. I mean, yeah, you can submit questions onto the YouTube comment system, but there really isn't a for sure way that someone will answer, and in a timely manner. So it's really nice to have that human-to-human -human interaction. They both know each other, they both know what we're doing, and just in case they need help, you can just ask the person. Two. Now, I don't really know how I feel about this, but one report linked in the doobly-doo says that it's kind of the basics for life. So you have all the stuff you need to be prepared for life, and if you want to go more and deeper onto the subject, then you can at home, but uh, it's just the basics. The, what you need and you can take it farther if you want. Now, I don't really know if this should really be called a pro, so let's just call this point planting the seed. Three, the curriculum's easy to teach and it's the standard curriculum. So if like I have a problem on a sixth grade math problem, then my parent can easily help me because they know the curriculum. They grew up doing it and it's public. Everyone knows it. It's so universal. Yet if you use a YouTube system, there's not really a one and only curriculum. Four. It's really easy to test kids on. For example, the reason we use rote learning is so everyone has the same curriculum, so it's really easy to compare kids where they are and where they need help. With YouTube learning, you can't really do that because you're either going to be learning different stuff at different times or just 
not really even taking a test on what you're learning. You don't even know if you're learning it. Long story short, with YouTube, it's hard to learn where kids stand. Con Run. I mentioned this earlier in the video, but it seems quite weird that we group kids by age in school. Like, it doesn't make sense that when you're 14, you're supposed to be ready for trigonometry. And yes, I did quote CTP Gray. Two, kids get bored! Tis true, actually. In a study linked in the doobly-doo, 30% of kids in school get bored because of lack of teacher interaction, and a whopping 75% of kids get bored because of uninteresting material. Tis like mom blown? And sadly, fewer than 2% of kids are not bored and engaged in every subject. What is going on there? You gotta spit it back out. If you think about it, the reason we learn stuff in school is pretty much just to repeat it back out on a test. I mean, it's just not only ludicrous on the face of it, it's also not very helpful. If the only reason I was going to school was to repeat the information I learned back out on a test, it's not really going to help me later in life. Four. It seems kind of weird that our grading system involves failing. Like, when you approach a test, students think, at least subconsciously, that they're going to get an A+, and can really only go down from there. When you miss a question, it's minus a point, not when you make a question, it's plus a point. I think this is kind of weird, because it doesn't really give the right message. I'm not going to go into this too much right now, but if you want to learn more, and I really, really suggest you watch this video, I'm going to link in the doobly to a video called Gamifying Education by Extra Credits. It's, it's really amazing. I, I really recommend it. Okay, I'm going to refer back to point three for a sec, but at the base of it, you're not really learning. It's just putting stuff in your short-term memory. In an interview between Stephen Colbert and Neil deGrasse Tyson linked in the doobly-doo, Neil says that being smart isn't just knowing facts, it's being able to learn on your facts, to grow on those facts, to be the person who can expand on what they know, not just know on why the universe expands or something like that. Which kind of means at the end of the day, knowing stuff is not always the best thing. Six and finally, it's a one-size-fits-all system, which seems great at first, but really not that much. If a student is needing help in a special area, they can't really do it because the next day they have to move on. It's a one-size-fits-all system. It can't really be customized, which is good for some, but not for most. For example, if Einstein here gets it and the two dogs don't, it doesn't matter. We're still going to move on. Einstein gets his way. Okay, now it's time to flip over to the pros and cons of blended learning, or YouTube learning, which is what we call it from now on. But before we completely flip over, let's see how YouTube Learning addresses some of the cons of rote learning. One, YouTube doesn't exactly group kids by age. I mean, anybody can watch any video at any time for free. So I have absolute power on what educational video I can watch, no matter what age I am. Two, kids don't get bored. Dude from Technicality, kids can still get bored on YouTube. Well, frankly, they don't for the most part. And even if they did, they'd probably stop watching the video. Plus, it's a YouTuber's job to try to make their content entertaining. Three. Yeah, I don't gotta spit it back out. After watching a YouTube video, you're not forced to take a test to see if you've learned anything. And by watching a YouTube video, that gives you the freedom of only knowing what you want to know. My point here is, you'd rather have four or five facts in your long-term memory that you learn actually really well than 10 or 12 facts in your short-term memory that you're gonna forget in a bit and barely know. Six. It's really not a one-size-fits-all system. Anybody can jump around between videos to cater to what they need to know and what they have trouble learning. Four and five don't really have counterpoints, and we pretty much just describe the pros, so let's jump into cons. Right after we list more pros. One, it's free! At least, for the most part, it's free to watch these educational YouTube videos. And with school, you have to pay to get in one way or another. Cut on a small tangent here, it's also pretty much free to make videos to put on YouTube. Like, the only thing you really need is a cell phone camera and your body and a, a YouTube account, which is 
also free. So it's low cost for students, low cost for creators, and creators get paid. So everyone's happy. Two, YouTube inspires students. Yeah, I know, I'm using those big words, inspired, but yes, they do. They get students excited about learning. For example, would you go home and teach your neighbors because you're inspired by your teacher? Or would you want to go home and research more into the subject, create a script, and create and learn digital animation, and create a CGP Grey style video to share with the world? Yeah, that would be more fun, huh? Time to flip to cons. To flip to con. There really is only one con, and it's that... It's not exactly too much better than school. It's still just a digital library. It's not personalized to fit everyone's need. This is again brought up by CGP Grey in his amazing video. But of course, I don't think this will be true for much longer. So I have no doubt that in no time at all, there'll be digital Aristotle for everyone. Hello again. It's the end screen, so I can actually use the computer and the script. Because it's the end screen, and people... People don't really, uh, you can stop watching now, it's okay. Uh, anyways, end screen, hi guys. Uh, by the way, uh, I didn't say get ready, get out, it'd be awesome there, because it just looks way cooler when I fade it out, so, I'll say it here, don't worry. Uh, welcome to the end screen, here are some links in the video all around me, to this way, that way, all the ways, uh, for some links I did in the video, and of course they're always in the doobly-doo. I'm adding a new feature that I think is going to be down there-ish, uh, called the video of the week. And that's the video I just can't stop watching, the video I, uh, really liked that week. And that's Viheart's net neutrality video. I'm actually going to go into net neutrality in two videos from now. But, uh, it's really interesting in subject, uh, I can't stop watching, uh, Viheart's video. So if you've got about ten minutes, then... Yeah, it would be a great thing to do. <laughs> uh, also, remember to subscribe at youtube.com dash technicality time, and now it's time for updates. What's going on in my life? You want to know, hopefully, I, I don't know, hopefully, you don't want to know because you are interested in me or, like, you're some stalker. It's kind of creepy, so. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I wasn't really this week, but I've graduated sixth grade. Hooray! Party, party, party. Uh, Woohoo! Summer's coming up. Uh, that means I'll have more time to make more videos, at least I hope, so stay tuned. I'm sorry I haven't been uploading. I, I saw a video the other day, and it's been a month, a month since I've been uploading, so tis cray. Uh, also, I got renewed. At least I, I like to call it that. Uh, I think this first video, this trial of videos, is called, like, Season 1 to see if technicality will work out, and it did. I got a better camera. I'm hoping to get a better computer, and we're going to get back in action. So, Season 2 is coming soon. Uh, just like I want her family, is moving on to season six. Hooray! On the amazing wedding finale thing. Let's keep going. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get by this fast because I know you people who still watch are like really bored. So, anyways, uh, I, I hope also in season two I do more Q and A videos where you can give me questions and I'll give you answers. Uh, so if you have a question, please just leave it not in the comments below. Uh, because the YouTube comment system is peculiar, and, uh, it's not exactly the way I want to do it. So, I made a Google form, or a Google Drive form, linked at the very top of the doobly do. so make sure you click that out. If you have a question for me, or a video idea, I really highly suggest you, uh, click on that, because I'd love to hear from you. Uh, since right now I'm new, almost all ideas will be answered. Uh, even if it's a bad idea. And before I go, I gotta roll in Oklahoma! Hooray! Yay, go self! Woohoo! Oklahoma, where the wind blows. I, I don't know the rest of the song. It's kind of sad. I think I should. Better look that up. Anyways, I'm playing Ali Hakim the Peddler, so... Yay! I don't know what to do with my hands, so... I'm... Anyways, make sure you submit those questions and get ready... Get out and be awesome, as usual. Thank you, guys. Okay. Woo. Packing up.